Good day, guys. Good day, guys. Hope you're good. Welcome back. Um, we're just decoding the candlestick trading Bible. So we just want to resume today from page page 58. So we are now on support and resistance, which is one of the most uh, important topics in this book. Okay. Let's see, let's just highlight it real quick. Okay, it's one of the most important topics uh in this book. So okay, let's get to it. Support and resistance are proven areas where buyers and sellers find some equilibrium. They are major turning points in the market. So what it simply means is if Let's say price was uh coming up, right? We're coming up, we're coming up, we're coming up. Then we sort of hit an area and we turn, right? That area now is now a point of interest. So should the market come back here, we can expect price to possibly reject. Or if price does break, we expect it to potentially retest it and push up. So now this area becomes an area of support or resistance. So if price is going up and it hits a zone, that zone it hits, it's called resistance. Okay, if price is coming down, that zone it hits, it's called support, just to make it simple. Okay, All right, let's clear this and continue. Supporting resistance levels are formed when price reverses and changes direction, and price will often respect this support and resistance level. In other words, they tend to contain price movement until, of course, price breaks through them. In training markets, support and resistance are formed from swing points. Okay. Let me just highlight that as well. Then I'll explain it a bit. Okay, in training markets, support and resistance are formed from swing points. In an uptrend, the previous swing point acts as a support level. Okay, in a downtrend, the old swing point acts as a resistance level. We're going to go into the examples. Okay, so this is an example of an uptrend, right? So on your chart, H4 daily, preferably the higher time frames. Just open and see if price is going up for an uptrend, if price is going down for a downtrend, or if price is moving sideways for a ranging market. I'm sure we spoke about this on the previous pages. So this is an example of an uptrend. So the higher high which price creates is where you draw your line, right? You just draw it into the future. Price creates another higher high, do the same thing. Another higher high, same thing. Another higher high, same thing. Until the price comes back to break, like a higher low, this trend will remain bullish, okay? So all these on the left are higher lows, so don't worry about the higher lows, just mark the higher highs for an uptrend. Then, uh, okay, we'll explain the downtrend a bit later. So when you mark these zones, wait for your price to break them. <clears throat> so price comes, it's a high, right? Then they drop, you mark the high, Price comes and breaks. If you know how to trade, yes, you can trade a breakout there for possible buys. But the best setup is when price pulls back to the broken resistance, which is now what? Support. That's where you expect, expect to take your buys from. That's the best setup right there. Okay, so... As you see here, price comes, uh, it breaks, pulls back down, rejects, 
with other other candlesticks, right? So that's one other thing you want to check. You want to see what candlesticks are appearing as price hits that zone. Price does the same thing here. They break, they come and reject with a couple of pin bars. They break again, they come and uh, reject with an inside bar. So we consider this candlestick here an inside bar. And we are in an uptrend. So at the same time, if you are using one of our strategies, we use BTMM, you find out that probably there will be a possibility of a moving average somewhere there. So if these things all line up at the same spot, then you can actually execute your trade without fear. Okay, so this is an example of an uptrend, and this is how you draw your uh support level for uptrend. The illustration above shows how the previous swing point acts as a support level after the breakout. When the market makes the retracement move, it respects the previous swing points, which is the support level, which will represent the beginning of another impulsive move. Let me just mark that. As you see, as you can see, when the market tests the previous swing point support level, it goes up again. By drawing a support level in an uptrend market, we can predict the next impulsive move. We can predict when the next impulsive move will take place. Let's see another example of a downtrend market. So a downtrend is simply the opposite. Okay, so when your price is coming down, you want to mark the lower lows. Price comes down, you mark the lower low. Anything which you can visibly see as a swing, like where price swinged and moved and swinged, you just mark that area. That's where you put your... Your, your 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 line your horizontal line then you just draw it into the future okay so all these areas here and finally this one so once you mark it into the future what you want to wait for is price to do what to break then retest they retest with the what here with the doji uh they come again uh they set a low here they push up then they if you see here we've got a lower low right right in the and we've got a nice pin by here. We're in a downtrend, so that sells. Okay, again, we break this one. You see here, we didn't retest, we didn't touch anything, but look at what they do here. They come, ara ara candlestick pattern, we're selling. Price continues pushing down. So basically, you just look for your entries right on that zone or near the zone. So two things can happen. Price can come slightly below let me just remove this. Price can come slightly below, or it can come right on the zone, or it can come slightly above. There's just variations. It won't be perfect all the time. All right. The illustration above shows us how the market respects the resistance level when price approaches the previous swing point, which is the resistance level. The market makes... Uh, okay. The market makes an impulsive move. If you understand how price action acts in a training market, you predict with high accuracy when the next impulsive move will begin. Another way to catch the beginning of an impulsive move is by drawing trend lines. So this is another technical skill that you can that you have to learn if you want to identify key linear support and resistance levels. Let me explain. You first what let me explain you first what do trend lines mean. Quite often, when the market is on the move making swing highs and lows, price will tend to respect a linear level, which is identified as a trend line. Bullish markets will tend to create a linear support level, and bearish markets will form a linear resistance level. So what this means is sometimes when price is going up, it moves uh some call them like channels, especially if the price is moving equal. So you just put a line touching the ends there, you put a line touching the ends. All you need is the first two equal points. Right, the true is true can be said for a downtrend. So sometimes uh maybe the highs can be it can come like this. Okay, you have the first point. Second point, 
third points. So you just have one train line on the bottom. They acting as your what as your support area. So when price is that area, you just buy, you buy, you buy. If it's a downtrend, it's just the opposite. If price is coming down, uh, you get the first two points, then you draw your trend line into the future. So that will act as a resistance. Once price comes near the trend line or on the trend line, you take your sales. Okay, so we'll go to the charts just now to check a few examples of um, a training market where we put our support and resistance lines. Then uh, we'll see if we can pick points where we can put some trend lines. All right, how to draw trend lines. To draw a quality trend line, you need to find at least two minimum swing points and simply connect them with each other. The levels must be clear. Do not try to force the trend line. Do not use smaller time frames to draw, to draw trend lines. Use always the four hour and the daily time frames to find obvious trend lines, okay? We will focus, we'll try to focus right now on how to draw them in a trending market. Our purpose is to identify the beginning of the impulsive moves in the in the trending market. In the next chapter, I'll explain to you in detail how to trade trend lines in combination with our price, price action trading setups. This is an example of how to draw trend lines. So if you see if this is the daily time frame, this is the first swing point. Right, remember now we've got lower lows. Don't forget the lower lows, right? Right, wherever price swings, don't be scared to put a line there. Right, so on those lower lows, you put your, your straight line there or your horizontal line. This one is not so clear. Okay, sometimes you get a variation where your support and resistance don't work but you can use the trend line. That's where the trend line comes into play, right? Okay, so this is another lower low here. Something like that, it's not so straight, but you can see the points I'm trying to drive on. Okay, so once you have your first two points, one, two, you draw your trend line. So amongst other confluences you need to take your trade, you, you don't need all those things which are in the book. You don't need all of them. But if you see most of them are lining up, you should just know that your trade is of high probability. So the first thing here, price breaks, right? Retest the first time, second time. Then they break again. On the third time, using a trend line, you can see ara ara candlestick pattern right on the trend line and also wait on the support zone, so on the resistance zone, right? The price broke here, came back, retested, then they dropped. They also hit the trend line, which was the third touch. Then they came back again, hit the trend line for the fourth time. And at the same time, we are still in line with another what? Resistance zone. So this is all you can use, especially if you see like a market trend. This is all the tools you can use, your trend lines, support and resistance. Just draw them on your charts. As you can see here, we, we haven't even started talking about indicators. When we put our moving averages, it only makes it more simpler. But again, you can trade without the moving averages. You can trade without any other indicators. indicators. Just pure price action can still make you profitable enough. All right, so let's drop down. As you can see, the market respects the trend line. When price approaches it, the market reverses and continues in the same direction. When the market moves this way, trend lines help us to anticipate the next when the next impulsive move. Um, it helps us to anticipate the next impulsive move with the direction of the market. Look at another example of an uptrend. Okay, price is coming up. When we're coming up, remember we want what high highs. In terms of uh, support and resistance, we want higher highs. Then on that higher high, we want to draw what? Our zones or our lines, our horizontal <coughs> lines. So first touch on the bottom, second touch here. So we know that on the third touch, we anticipate buys. 
okay, touch number three happens here. What do we have? We've got a series of pin bars right there. One, two, three, four, five. Five candles with about three of them being pin bars, one being a doji and one just being stuck in there. That's a sign for you to watch, to take your buys. If you are watching how the structure is playing out, you can see that price is, break, is broken the zone. They are creating higher highs, so we are in an uptrend, obviously. Okay, price comes, this high doesn't hold. So where the level does not hold, usually price can come and hit the trend line. Then you can still take your buys from there. So instead of uh, looking at this, as a support zone, you see price came, they gave a pin bar initially. They ranged within that area, but they never even followed through with buys. So if you see that your trend line is close by, if you draw your trend line, you can easily figure out that, okay, price most probably will want to come to wait. The trend line will possibly maybe a moving average if there's a moving average thing. And it will hit there, then you can still take your buys from that area instead of buying up here. Then now the whole trend just moved. You see the break here as well. Then the price ranged on top. So that's some of the ways you can just approach your charts, especially on trending markets. As you can see, the market respects the trend line and by drawing it the right way, we can easily predict the next movement upward. This is all what we can say about trending markets. I think it's clear and simple. Now what I want you to do is to open your charts and try to find trend markets, find previous swing points, support and resistance, and try to find trend lines as well. This exercise will help you understand how trending markets move. Okay, perfect. So we're going to slide to the charts. Okay, this is V75S. This is a synthetic indice or synthetic index rather okay so when you open this uh try not to mind these things here i don't know what my mt5 is doing but let's just focus on the price so we're just going to start from here right on the bottom there let me just change my color okay so from this high here this is where we're starting our price, where the uptrend starts. So this is a trending market. That's the first thing we need to agree on. Excuse me, now this market is a trending market, right? So we want to look for support and resistance areas. So the only thing we look for is higher highs. Okay, so from here, what's the highest high you see? Probably is this one, this one, this one, this market, uh, this type of uptrend is too, I don't know how to, how you explain this angle because some are a bit more clear away. There is a bit more uh, of a retracement move, but this one is a bit steep, if I may put it that way. But anyways, just draw the levels you can see clearly. So there's this high, high there's this one, there's this one, there's this one. Is this one. Then from here, you can see price is sort of trying to play in the same range. So we want to draw our, our horizontal lines. So I'm just going to put a few, put one there. Okay, this might take a while. Put one there. Wherever there's a higher high, which is a bit visible, or which we marked. If you open a chart, whatever asset you trade, just open your chart, look for where there's an uptrend and you do this. You pick your highs. Okay, until the last one. So now, as price is moving up, how do we trade this trending market? What's the best point to enter? Because sometimes you open your chart and you feel like price is leaving without you. Okay, so how do we enter? So after a high is broken, what you want to see is you want to wait for price to break, then retest. Okay, a high, you want a break and a retest. A break, a retest, right? 
So this market is a bit different. I'll try to look for one which looks a bit more something we can use. All right, so this is just a variation because these types of moves happen. So right here now you look for your candle. You want ara ara candlestick patterns. You know those candles with equal size. Price comes up, goes uh comes down, goes up. You want to look for pin bars, dojis, uh inside bars, all those candles we lent. They are the ones we look for when price returns to retest on that area. Right here, price broke. There was no retest here. Here's something we can work with. Okay, then here, price is just ranging. So all this information is the info you need in order to decipher whether you need to take the trade or not. Okay, so let me try to look for another asset with a bit of a different move. You can see here, there's a variation of a trend line. You see there's this point and this point, and I wanted to decipher whether they were going to hit here and push up or what, but you can see they broke, which made that trend line invalid. So if it's broken, it simply means it's invalid and you don't have to use it. Okay, but if you see now, if you put it like this, okay, this is a variation of an uptrend. You can see this is the first low, second low. So on the third touch, right, what candles do we have? There we go, are other candlesticks. On the fourth touch, what do we have? Again, are other candlesticks, right? So once you get at least three, four touches for, for, for an uptrend, I feel like that's enough to make you a bit profitable for that particular point in time. Because from here, you can see you catch a couple of pips until price hits the next high. Then they will retrace, hit again. Then they will you hit a couple of pips until price hits the, what, the next high. So again, an example of a support and resistance area, you see this high here. There is our zone, right? Price breaks, then comes back and gives what? Uh, a doji. And initially, they actually gave an RR candlestick, these two here. Just a variation. They gave a doji again. It's on a support zone. It's on a moving average. You take the trade. So that's the best way to do it. Then from there, the market became choppy. Right? You can see now there's no higher highs. There's no lower lows. Price is just playing on the same area. So a choppy market is when price is doing like this. There's no high highs, there's no, there's no equal highs, there's no equal lows, if I may put it that way. That equals a choppy market. You cannot trade inside that. But if you see a market like that, you don't trade. Then there's a range market whereby price will be giving equal lows, equal highs. Sometimes they might do this, okay? So all you do is you aim to sell from these areas. You aim to buy from these areas. You don't take anything inside here, okay? So these are the different types of markets expressed on one chart. If you look from the left, we had a bit of a downtrend here. Even though there was, it was a bit like just steep there, it was just like a minor downtrend. So let's see if we can get some price action, which I can explain. Let's see if we're done, print. Okay. After these equal lows, right, we are now creating lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. So on every lower low, you put a line on every lower low, you put a line on every lower low, put a line on every lower low, you put a line. What you simply do is wait for price to break, then retest, pin bar. They broke, retested here, they came slightly above onto the moving average. Broke, retest, and then they came all the way down here, they broke, retested. So those are all the trades you can take in a downtrend.
that's how you simply have to mark your chart. So I hope this is a bit clear. I won't take much of your time. We'll simply go back to the book, see if you can go through the range of markets. Okay, so a range of market I tried to explain just now, then we, we are now going through it. You'll see more about it now. Ranging markets, um, okay, these are also tradable markets. Ranging markets are pretty straightforward. They are often called sideways markets because their neutral nature makes them appear to drift to the right horizontally. When the market makes a series of higher highs and higher lows, we can see the market is training up. But when it stops making these cons consecutive peaks, we can see that the market is arranging. A range market moves in a horizontal form where buyers and sellers just keep knocking the price back and forth between support and resistance level. See the example below. So you can see an example just like I illustrated. Uh, equal highs here. You want to take your trades from those highs for sales and you want to take your buys from these equal lows. Anything in between here can be a bit hard to trade. So I advise you not to take the trades inside the range. Just take them from outside the outside levels. Okay, see the example below. The chart above shows the range of market. As you can see, the price is bouncing between horizontal uh, support and resistance level. Right. The difference between training markets and range of market is that Training markets tend to move by forming a pattern of higher highs and higher lows in case of an uptrend and uh, higher low in the lower low. Uh, this is supposed to be lower high. Okay. Lower high and the lower low in case of a downtrend. I think this is just like a typing here. Really. In case of a downtrend, but the ranging markets tend to move horizontally between key supports and resistance level. You understand you your understanding of the difference between the both markets will help you better use the right price action strategies in the right market conditions. Right. So you need to know what type of market conditions you are in in order to know what tools to use from your arsenal. Right. I think that's crystal clear. Trading and ranging markets is completely different from trading training markets. Because when the market is ranging, it creates equilibrium. Buyers are equal to sellers and there is no one in control. This will generally continue until the range structures broke out and a trending condition starts to organize. The best buying and selling opportunities are okay at key support and resistance levels. There are three ways to trade ranging markets. I'm not going to go into details. Because what I want you to get here is the skill to look at your charts and decide whether the market is trending or ranging. In the next chapters, I'll go into details and I'll give you the trading tactics and strategies that you use to trade trending or ranging markets. If you can't differentiate between ranging markets and trending markets, you will not know how to use these price action strategies. So just make sure you are able once you open a chart, any chart you open, no matter what time frame it is, for that particular time frame, just check is it uptrending, is it downtrending, is it ranging, or is it uh just choppy? That's all you need to know before you can decide what to do for that particular day or on that particular asset. The first way to trade ranging markets is by waiting for the price to approach your support and resistance level. Then you can buy at key support level and sell at key resistance level. See the example below. Okay, that's a ranging market. Like we said, you need to sell from the top or the resistance area, and you need to buy from the support. Like if there is no reaction like here, it means there is no buy. There is no trade. The price actually broke out and it's another setup for me. As you can see, the market is moving horizontally. In this case, the best buying opportunity is okay at support level. And the best selling opportunity is okay at the resistance level. 
The second way of trading range markets is by waiting for the breakout from either support level or the resistance level. All right, this is the second way to trade. When the market is ranging, no one knows what is going to happen. We don't know who's going to be in control of the market. This is why you have to pay attention to the boundaries. But when one of the players decides to take control of the market, we will see a breakout of the support and resistance level. The breakout means that the ranging period is over and the beginning of a new trend takes place. Example below. Pretty much straightforward. Price was respecting these areas. Then on the fourth touch, they decided to break out. So sometimes they will break out and continue just up. Sometimes they will break out, then they will retest and continue going up. Sometimes they will fake out. They will just come out, then come back inside the range. So that's called a fake out. I'm sure there's a part which explains it uh, just below. As you can see, the market was trading between support and resistance levels, and suddenly the price broke out of the resistance level. This indicates that the beginning of a trend is likely to happen. So the best way to enter is after the breakout. It's important to remember that range boundaries are often overshot, giving the illusion of a breakout occurring. This can be very deceptive and it does trap a lot of traders who positioned into the breakout. So that's the fake out I was talking about. The third way to trade the range market is to wait for a pullback after the breakout of the support or resistance level. The pullback is another chance to join the trend for traders who didn't enter in the breakout. Okay, there we go. The breakout, which I explained, pretty much simple. Just price breaking out of the range, retesting, then continuing up. Okay. As you can see in the chart above, the market was ranging. Price breaks out of the resistance level to indicate the end of the ranging periods and the beginning of a new trend. After the breakout, the market comes back to retest the resistance level that becomes support before it goes up. The pullback is your second chance to join the buyers if you miss the breakout. But pullbacks don't always okay after every breakout. When it occurs, it represents a great opportunity with a good risk to reward ratio. What you have to remember is that ranging market moves horizontally between support and resistance levels. These are key levels that you have to focus on. The breakout of the support or the resistance level indicates that the ranging period is over. So you have to make sure that the breakout is a real to join um, the new trend safely. If you miss the breakout, wait for the pullback when it occurs. Don't hesitate to enter the market. So I'll repeat that. If you miss the breakout, wait for the pullback. When it occurs, don't hesitate to enter the market. When you are trading, range of markets, always make sure that the market is worth trading. If you feel like you can't identify boundaries, which is the support and resistance, this is a clear indication of a choppy market. In Forex, choppy markets are those which have no clear directions. When you open chart, you find a lot of noise and you can't even decide if the market is arranging or trending. You have to know that you're, you are watching a choppy market. This type of markets can make you feel very emotional and doubt your trading strategies as it starts to drop in for performance. The best way to determine if a market is choppy is just by zooming out on the daily chart and taking in the bigger picture. After some training, screen time, and experience, you easily be able to identify if, if the market is arranging or if it's a choppy market. Here's a good example of a choppy chart that is not worth trading. So usually what happens if you are dragged into a choppy market like this one? If, if it's not clear, the thing is you might think price is trending down you see a certain candle you execute doesn't play out you see another candle you execute it doesn't play out you see another candle you execute it doesn't play out you see another candle you execute it doesn't play out that simply means there is no direction and there is no trade okay that's a choppy market notice in the above 
in the chart above the price action in the highlighted area is very choppy and it is moving sideways in a very small tight range this is a sign of a choppy market that you, you should stay away from if a market is choppy in my opinion it is not worth trading if you try to trade it you give back your profits shortly after big winners because markets often consolidate after making big moves that's it. something to note after every big move the market will consolidate it will take a breather so during this breather it can range or it can be choppy or it can be trapping and just moving wild right after every big move you can check on your charts just to make sure that this is facts Okay, time frames and top down analysis. Okay, I think let's resume on this. Mm. I'm thinking if we should go through the pages now. Uh, time frames, top down analysis. Okay, let's just go through this. Let me just check my time also. All right, I'll just rush through this. Uh, time frames in top down analysis. Okay, maybe you wanted us to go through the charts, but I think I've shown you examples of trending markets, ranging markets, and choppy markets. So let's just go into time frame. <coughs> okay, time frames, top down analysis. As a price action trader, your primary time frame is the one hour, four hour, and the daily. But before I go into this, maybe these beginners reading this and going through this for the first time, you should know that when we're doing forex trading, um, when you open your chart, your chart you see these time frames. From depending with the platform you're using, some platforms you can even see the one second chart. Some time frames you the lowest is the one minute, so you will see M one, M five, M two, M three. M10, those are just minutes. The M stands for minutes. The H stands for hours. The D stands for day. The W stands for week. The M uh, stands for month. The big M stands for month. But it just depends on the platform you're on. Okay. So as a price action trader, your primary time frame is the one hour, the four hour, and the day. These are the main, the best time frames to look at. And if you're drawing support and resistance and all the other things which you spoke about, the daily and the four hour are the best to use. Price action works on bigger time frames. If you try to trade pin bars or engulfing bars on the five minute time frame, you will lose your money because there's a lot of noise on smaller time frames. And the market will generate a lot of false signals because of the hard battle between the bears and the bulls. Okay, so smaller time frames basically they've got a lot of noise. That's why we prefer drawing on the higher time frames. Okay. Besides, there's no successful price action trader who focuses only on one time frame to analyze his charts. Maybe you've heard of the term top-down analysis, which means to begin with the bigger time frames to get the bigger picture, and then you switch to the smaller want to decide whether to buy or to sell the market. Let's say you want to trade the four hour chart. You have to look at the weekly chart first and then the daily. If the weekly and the daily charts analysis align with the four hour chart, you can then take your trade. And if you want to trade the one hour chart, you have to look at the daily chart first. This is a critical step to do as a price action trader because this will help you avoid low probability trading setups and it will allow you to stay focused on high probability price action signals. Through your top-down analysis, we will start with the bigger time frame and look to gather the following information. The most important is the supports and resistance levels. These areas represent turning points in the market. If you can identify them on the weekly chart, you will know what is going to happen when price approaches these levels of the four hour chart. So you decide whether to buy or to sell the market or to ignore the signals you get from the market. Okay. The market structure. The weekly analysis will help you identify if the market is trending up or down 
or if it's ranging on choppy markets. In general, you know what the big investors are doing and you will try to find a way to follow them on the smaller time frame using my price action strategies. The previous candle, okay, let's do this. The last candle on the weekly chart is important because it tells us what happens during a week and it provides us with valuable information about the future market move. When you identify these points using the weekly chart, you can now move to the daily chart or the four hour and try to gather information such as the market condition. What the market is doing on the four hour time frame is it training up or down or is it ranging or is it a choppy market? What are the most important key levels or the daily time frame on the, okay, let me repeat that. What are the most important key levels on the four hour or the daily time frame? This could be support and resistance, supply and demand areas, uh, trend lines, then price action. A candlestick pattern that will prove, provide you with a signal to buy or short the market. This could be a pin bar, an engulfing bar or an inside bar. Let me give you an example to help you understand why it is important to adopt the top-down analysis concept in your trading method and what is going to happen if you don't look at the bigger time frame before switching to your primary charts. Look at the illustration below. Okay, here's the charts. Price hit this area. Consider that a lower low since it looks like price is coming from the top side. Here's a retest where we anticipate uh, entries, another area, and another potential area right there. Right, you can see it risky to buy through the level because it's been respected in terms of sales. So before you even consider buying, you need to see the price what do a break possible retest and commitment to go up. Otherwise, this price will respect and push down. Okay, so let's see what the book is saying. As you can see in this weekly chart above, we've gathered two important points that will help us decide what to do in the daily time frame. The first point is that the market approaches to an important weekly resistance level that will represent a hold point in the market. The second information is the rejection from this key resistance level. As you can see, the price was rejected immediately when it approached the level. This indicates that there are sellers there and they are willing to short the market. What confirms our analysis is the formation of the inside bar force breakout patterns that indicates a reversal. Now let's switch to the daily time frame and see what is going on in the market. Okay, so that's the same zone bullish candlestick buy signal. You can see the same area marked on the weekly. Here's the same area on the daily, right? So you can see these candles are sort of showing you that okay, buy, 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 bullish candlestick, buy, buy, buy. But you haven't yet confirmed. Weekly time frame is telling you no, you know what, you need to rethink what you're seeing from a smaller time frame, right? You can't commit to buy until price shows you that it actually wants to push up. All right, let's continue. On the daily chart, we have a clear pin by candlestick pattern that indicates a bullish signal. If you focus just on one time frame, you make your trading decision, you will buy the market because there is a clear pin bar signal. But if you analyzed the weekly chart, you will know that there is a very powerful key level that will stop the market from going up. So it is better to think of selling the market if there is a clear signal rather than to buy it. Look at what happened next. Okay, check. So remember the pin bar, we just zoomed in. So they gave a fake out just above that zone, doji, bearish engulfing. Not a bearish engulfing and such, but this is one of the patterns we read about in the first few pages. If you scroll back up, you see it, then the price just melted back down. Okay. Weekly level dominates. That's the point. The higher time frame is always powerful than the smaller time frame. Always remember that as well. 
So top-down analysis wins the bullish candlestick signal did not survive long after the market moved into the weekly turning points. Elements from the higher time frames can be such a powerful feature that they dominate over the signal on your trading time frame. Right. Let's continue. As you can see, the top-down analysis works. The pin bar candlestick signal didn't work because the weekly resistance level was a powerful turning point that reversed the market's direction. If you want to trade price action based on one time frame, I highly recommend you stop trading because it will you will end up losing all your entire trading account and you will never ever become a successful trader. Trading counter trends is very profitable as well, but without the top-down analysis, you put yourself in trouble. Let me give you another example to show you how you can treat counter trends using your price action trading setups in combination with top-down analysis. Okay, price now with anticipated 10 points. Okay, weekly chart. This is also another weekly chart, right? You can see we've got a nice resistance level here. So let's see what price did on this area. Price into major resistance. Price is into level where it's highly anticipated at a so, Okay, how do we know? Okay, because it has a proven major reversal point in the market if we look to the left. So always as a rule of thumb, always look to your left to see what you have there. What information do you have to the left? When we broke here, what information do we have? What information do we have? So information to your left always helps you to decide what to do. Okay, from here on, we have a clear option to look for sell signals on our trading time frame. Okay, so let's drop down and see. As you can see in the chart about prices are at a weekly resistance level, buyers were rejected twice from this level, which indicates that the market is at a hot point and it is likely to reverse. What you can do as a price action trader is to switch to the daily time frame to look for a selling opportunity. Okay, you can find a price action set up near the weekly resistance level on the daily time frame. This is going to be a high probability setup to take into consideration. See the example below. Okay, now check on the daily what price action we have. Right. We also read just now after an explosive move the market will slow down, the market will rest, it will range, it will chop, right? As it is doing that, it's deciding whether to continue, whether to come down. We are on a resistance from a weekly chart. So once we start getting a certain candlestick, you start saying, okay, fine, this is now a high probability for sales. We can consider selling if we see um, the right candlesticks we need. Okay, so let's see what happens next. The daily chart above confirms our weekly analysis. As you can see, there's a clear bit of signal near the weekly resistance level. The pin bar was rejected from that level, and there's also the formation of an inside bar force breakout. This is a clear indication of a trend change. See what happened next. Okay, there we go. So after the pin bar, this was the last pin bars we saw just now. They trapped. You see, this is a trap move going back up to those same highs, but that level held. Then price just like dropped. Then continued just dropping. Okay. <clears throat> and the reversal was huge. The example above shows that that counter trend works if it is well mastered. It is a contra train approach that requires experience. So if you are a beginner, I highly recommend you stick to trading with the trend. Try to practice as much as you can on the top down analysis concept with the trend. And when you master trading with the trend, you can then move to trade high probability counter trend setups. There are many approaches used to time the market turns and plan trades, and most of these approaches lead to greater confusion and lack of confidence in the results. Keeping the analysis simple is most often the best way to go, and top-down analysis is one of the easiest approaches that I recommend to master if you want to trade the right way. 
what you have to do right now is to open your charts and try to find and try to practice what you learned in this chapter. Try to identify the market trend using these techniques, right? Always try to identify the market trend. It will be a little confusing at the beginning, but with some screen time and practice, you'll find it easy to identify the market direction. Okay, trading strategies and tactics. Okay, when we resume, we resume from page 79. All right, so we're gonna slide to the charts quickly just to round up. Okay, what do we want to look for? Let's see if I can find an example to explain here. <clears throat> Okay, we can see that this is a zone from the weekly chart, right? Let me... <clears throat> Based on this low here, we have broken it, we retested once. Possible retest here, right? This is the weekly chart, remember. So on that same area, I wanted to use current market price so that we don't get confused. So. On that same area here, let's drop down to the daily. Let's see what we have. Okay, so on the daily chart, remember, if we are looking to sell, we are looking for pin bars, we are looking for rejections. If this price decides to break... <clears throat> To break that area, it will mean it, it's now like a reversal of this whole trend. We could now be heading up to the next zone. You see this area here, which was never retested. Right? Price can be heading there. But if we get our nice pin bars happening there, maybe another doji or something, maybe a huge bearish engulfing here, it will simply mean that our price is going to reverse back. Okay, so those are the things you look for. If you do multi time frame analysis, that's what you're looking for, right? See that touchy, it was just like a touch. It looks like it's nothing, but you can see it's coming from a higher time frame chart. Okay, this is the four hour. This is where that touch is. I think it's at about midnight. Let me keep draw dropping the time frames and see what we have in each one. So on H1, if you were day trading H1, you can see price came, they hit, they gave what big bearish engulfing day. Uh, they dropped, if you wanted to take sales there, that's fine, your stop loss is above that zone. That's for day traders. You can wait for a pattern to form. Um, this is another session on its own way you learn the patterns which these uh, markets move in, like your AMs, your A's, your head and shoulder patterns, your gut leads. there's a lot of patterns, but this is just like a simple M pattern, right? They give another doji there, so that's another entry for sales, then price drops. Uh, there's a level there. So for this particular price action, that particular day, that particular time period, there was a small downtrend. You see, we broke, we retested, we dropped, Right, but now price is sort of turning back again to that resistance zone from the weekly. So we still want to see if it will hold or it will break. Okay, so if you're trading V75, just check how price played out. This is 22 October 2022. Just find how price played out in case it depends with what day you see this video. Just scroll to V75 H1 put in that date, see how price reacted to this area, even the days after. Since it's a high time frame zone, you want to see how price reacted from that area. All right, so let's see if there's something else to pinpoint. Mm, let's go to the weekly. Okay, what do we have here? What do we have here? Uh, this looks like it looks like it's the old time lows. For this particular thing, these are the all-time lows weekly. Um, 
what can I do here? Let me see. Okay, price almost came there. You see what I'm looking at? Price can potentially come back up here. You see that it's based on this. All right, these are the all time lows. So this is the only information we have on the weekly. So let's drop to the daily chart. Let's see what they are doing there. Okay, on the daily chart, we don't have anything clear as well, except for the downtrend which was happening here. Then this price action happening here, this is the trend sort of readjusting itself. Price, does it want to come down? Does it want to come up? What does it want to do? So based on the daily um, downtrend pin bar, we could come down. Let's see, let's see. Okay, you can see how it's marked. I think this, I was trading it actively, this zone. Price came and reacted off it yesterday, right? Remember, they haven't come to this weekly area. So it's a zone which is very potential. Once we see that the price wants to come up, it can be used as a target. That price action, there, that price area there. Okay, so for now, uh, for the downtrend to continue, if it's a downtrend, they have to break this area. Right, but for now, there's no current setup here because we look like we are in a range also. Okay, we have these equal lows here. So our point of interest is right here. That's where we're waiting for price to decide. Once they give us a reaction right here, then we can take buys. Okay, so take keep an eye on that. If they do break, then consider selling, going all the way back down to these lows. That's basically how you approach your charts. You try to do multi time frame analysis, try to go through the charts to see what the charts are giving you uh, so that you can try to decipher the best setup possible. Okay. All right, so I hope this helps. Oh, before I go, let me explain something else here, which I've just noticed. If you see this low here, right, we broke. We came, we retested right there. So there were sales for a particular period, that one candle in there. But if you check the next candle after that, bullish engulfing, this makes that an RR candlestick for buys. Okay, so price was coming up. It's more like a retest and a continuation up. So just take note of those variations in the market. So now we're coming back to this next zone. It's a swing point which we drew, swing point which we drew. So from a swing point, we expect this. From a swing point, we expect this. So on the first instance, the setup played halfway and it failed. On the second setup, it played all the way and uh, they gave a second touch, but it dropped. They came back below. This is also a swing point here. This is a swing point here. So you draw your zones into the future depending on the time frame you're on so if you draw here uh it's a bit ugly if you draw one here there's your pin bar there that's your cell so price is broken this one which you could have used as a target so this is our point of interest right now okay those already in buys they are straight up legit nothing wrong with that uh those who are looking for sales, maybe you keep looking for swing lows, right? This looks like a swing low. This looks like a swing low. So if we break here, we're looking for sales. And that's it. So I hope this helps. When we come back next time, we'll resume uh, reading the candlestick trading Bible and try to go through the charts again. Uh, I think we are now on page what page 79. So we'll resume, resume from trading strategies and tactics, page 79. So whatever we went through today, just simply go through your charts, whatever you trade, back tests, look for trends, look for uptrends, downtrends, look for ranging markets, choppy markets, mark out the charts, look at the candlesticks on the zones, 
try to draw trend lines and uh, just put in more screen time and everything will start to make sense. I hope you enjoy. Thank you.